Hi, this is Joe Linton, and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use curves in Photoshop to split tone your images. Um, this is our starting image that we've got here, and we're going to add in a curves layer. I'll just do that by clicking on that icon over there. And here is our usual display for curves. Now uh, you'll see it comes up with the default um, preset, which just has the straight line through the middle, and it's in RGB mode. So if I was to grab that and lift it up, it brightens things. If I take it down, it darkens things, as you probably know. You can uh, put multiple points on here just to uh, enable you to work a little bit more closely with particular areas so that you can just brighten up particular bits and hold other bits steady. Uh, you can Depending on where you are along the line this way, uh, depends on which type of pixels you're controlling more. So down here, these are more the darker darker pixels. And up here, these are the, the lighter end. Uh, you'll notice that if you only have the one point and lift it, it does tend to still brighten everything. So you, you know, a good idea often just to uh, put a point or two in there just to hold it still. So you can see there that that is brightening up just the, the very brightest areas of the image and we can darken down or brighten up the, the darkest areas of the image. So you can work uh, in quite a targeted way on the uh, areas of an image by brightness um, using the curve. So let's just get rid of these. In fact, we'll click on that one to reset everything. It's just next to the eye there, that little reset button there. If you've got a whole load of stuff going on that you then decide you don't want, you just click on that and that resets the curve. What we're going to do to um, split tone it is to move away from the RGB display and to go on to each of the individual ones. So, for example, let's click on blue here. Now, if you drag the blue up, it puts more blue into the image. If you drag the blue down, it takes the opposite. And if you remember from your white balance sliders, yellow is the opposite to blue on there. So as we drag it down, there's more yellow. As we drag it up, there's more blue. OK. Now, depending on where we do that along this line, depends on whether we're going to be adding it more into the shadows or more into the highlights. So if we wanted to, for example, add more blue in here, but to try and keep it more targeted at the shadows, we can go right to the bottom left hand corner here and drag, nope, that's gone back to RGB, sorry, let's go blue, there we go, and then drag that up, and you'll see that it starts in the shadows. By the time you're way up here, it's affecting almost everything, obviously, but uh, if you start down here and just bring it up just that little bit, you can bring in some blue, a bit more blue into the shadows. So I turn it off and on, you can see these darker areas that have got now got that blue in it, it is affecting the skin tone a little bit, but not um, as much as it would have done if we'd have just done it from the middle. Now, supposing we wanted to add yellow into the highlights, then we can go to the opposite end, and we know that if we take blue down, we get an increase in yellow. So if we grab it right in that top corner there, and we start to drag that down, you'll see that she starts to go that little bit more yellow, especially it'll be on the skin, because that's where the brighter areas are. So we can bring some yellow into the highlights, simply by dragging that right hand side down a little bit. So turn that off and on. You can see what that's doing. You can add a little bit more in if you want to. I suggest you don't want to go too far with that. And this is sort of thing that's um, sometimes known as cross processing. It's just um, uh, or split toning. We're looking at um, adding a little bit of a particular color into the highlights and shadows area. Now, just so you can see that a little bit more clearly, I'm just going to uh, make that black and white, um, the underlying image. And then over the top of that there, we should be able to see a little bit more clearly what's going on with our curves. So if I, um, nope, nope, I'm back in the RGB mode again. Let's just go back to the blue. There we go. So if I drag that down further there, you can see the yellow appearing in the highlights. And if I drag this one up here, you can see the blue in the shadows and you can go for a more sort of extreme version. You don't tend to want that much of it when you're doing it with a color. It can be a little bit too intense. Uh, if you've converted it to monochrome, then you may want to um, give it a fairly strong uh, split tone just to uh, make it look a little bit more interesting and not too sort of washed out with the colors. So just close that one up a moment. So there you can see the effect on the color. And there it is in the black and on just on the black and white. So you can see that I've got very little yellow coming in here, but I've got quite a fair bit of blue in that dark 
um, background there. If I turn that off and now you can see it mixed with the colour, turn the effect off and on. You should be able to see some yellow appearing, particularly sort of in here, and then the, this area here going that little bit more blue. That's just by dragging those two points um, along that particular curve layer like that. Now let's just suppose you wanted to try and play with some other colours. Now you can do that um, as well within the same curves adjustment layer. So let's say that we wanted to make this not so much just sort of blue but a bit more kind of purpley in the background perhaps so that we've got some um, sort of magenta being added to the to the shadows. If you remember again from your um, color temperature uh, white balance sliders if we go to green ring it raising it up is going to give us more green the opposite of green is magenta a sort of purpley color like that okay so in other words if we want to introduce a magenta tone into the shadows we need to take away uh, some green so instead of doing like we did before on the left hand side bringing it up because you can see that just puts green into the shadows we bring it slightly to the right and that starts to introduce that magenta in there and we can decide exactly how far we want that to go again we can sort of use um, dots along the line to help sort of pin it a little bit so it doesn't go quite so far up the uh, in terms of affecting all of the tones we'll grab that bottom one oops daily and you can just bring it across a fraction and just affect those darker tones and leave the the lighter tones untouched so just turn that on and off you can now see we've got quite a purpley background because we're still adding in um, our blue uh, from here if we wanted to of course we can reset everything just take these away and we can go to our green and we can see what that would look like with just the magenta being added in and uh, and nothing else so that's without the uh, the blue that we had there earlier. That's just the magenta uh, coming into the shadows. But you can see you can add more than one colour in. You can mix the colours together. Um, if we brought magenta into the highlights, obviously going to make her skin go quite pink. If we find her skin's getting a little bit too magenta, we can take it back across. But be very careful because you don't want it to be going green. That's just not going to look very nice. Uh, but it's sometimes you may want to take just a touch back or use a pin or two along here just to stop the uh, the uh, shadow colour spilling into the highlights too much. Okay, so let's reset our various lines that we're going from uh, neutral. We'll go back to the red one, which we haven't looked at yet. Uh, now with red, raise it. It brings more red in everywhere, and if you lower it, it brings in cyan. There's that very sort of light uh, bluey color, bluey greeny color. Okay, so same sort of idea as before. If we drag the whole curve, it's going to go everywhere. Uh, if we want to restrict it, we can grab in the in the corner and slide that along. And if we want to add it into the more red into the shadows, we drag it up. There's the red going into the shadows. If we want to do the opposite and put more cyan into the shadows, we drag it along the bottom here. And of course, you can go to different points in between, depending on what sort of color, exact color shade you're after. Um, you're not forced to just drag it just up against the edge like that. You can bring it in a little bit and uh, change the color mix if you want to do so. And similarly up here with the highlights, we could bring some more cyan into into the highlights if we wanted to or we can um, change it around instead and uh, bring a little bit more red into the highlights so there's all sorts that you can do with this very quickly very simply and you can see the effect straight away and you can go back and adjust it and you can also as I've already shown layer things up so that you can start to uh, produce uh, quite complex color tones there it's a very different way of doing it to how you do it in in Lightroom, but um, it's uh, e extremely effective, uh, easy to try. The difficulty can be knowing when to stop sometimes with these things. It's easy to overdo it, so uh, it needs to be a little bit careful with that. But just think about what effect it is that you're after. So if you're going for a typical sort of cross-processing look, that's like the one we started with. So we start with the, the blue and we say, okay, we're going to pop a little bit of that blue into the shadows. We don't want to go so it's really vivid blue. We just want to eh, 
a little bit of a blue in there and then we're going to bring balance that with some yellow in the highlights go about there for the moment and then we can go into the green section and bring in a little bit of magenta into the shadows and remember to do that we're coming across to the right here into this area underneath that diagonal line that's going to pull the magenta in more and it's going more of a deep purple because we've already got some blue in there as we saw before and then if we if we wanted to as well we can of course have a little look at what would happen if we played with the the red channel here so let's grab that in that corner and we can pull some of the uh the red color out of the highlights there stop it being quite so sort of magenta or we can add more in if we really want to and very quickly like that you can completely retone an image so there's a before and there's the after uh, just by using a few sliders and you can then go on to do other things and if you want to you can come back to it so let's just um, let's just say that we decide we're going to put in a, a new little bit more contrast using this levels here but then we're thinking actually I'm not quite so keen on how the colors are looking we can just double click on the curves go back in there you'll see on the RGB summary you've got the summary there of where the various uh, lines are and if you just drag the um, the line that it gives you there of course you're back to just brightening and darkening up your your image in the usual way um, but let's just say we want to go back into here and we don't want it to be quite so sort of deep purple we might just pull that back a little bit like that and then we can if we wanted to of course we can then go and adjust our our shadows in the blue as well so that's a little bit less so it's easy to go back and redo things, readjust things, and um, you can do it all with one adjustment layer. If you wanted to, you could create several adjustment layers, so each one is adjusting a particular type of color and then mix them accordingly, um, even using opacity sliders. But as you've seen, there's no real need to have more than one layer, uh, layer to do this. You can just do it with that one um, adjustment layer like that. So that's just taking it from being... Uh, this is sort of our normal sort of mid grey colour that we had there, and that's uh, that's the image with a little bit of a um, split tone added. And we've got a little bit of magenta and blue in the background there, and we've got a little bit of warmth added into our highlights. So now you've seen how easy it is. I give you um, it'll give you a good excuse to go and have a play. Bring up your curves layer, and uh, just don't forget that you need to click on the red, the green, or the blue channel and have a little play with what that does to your to your coloring you normally as you can see on my graph here you normally only want small movements in either direction if you're dragging it way up and way across you're likely to get something that looks a bit too extreme unless you're after a very sort of um, comic book poster type of effect so that's how you can uh, do split toning of an image using curves adjustment layers in photoshop thank you for watching